Good morning, everyone. Melissa here with Build a Better Bakery talking to you all about baking business topics that I get a lot of questions about as a baking business mentor. And I've been mentoring since 2018, so it's been a few years. And I get a lot of questions just about starting a bakery specifically, um, and especially about moving from uh, or choosing either working from home, something like a cottage business, or working commercially. And there's a lot of different definitions for commercial baking. So that's going to be the topic that we're going to cover today. If we've never met before, I am the main mentor and the owner of Build a Better Bakery, which again is that mentorship service that I mentioned. I do currently have a team of a couple other military spouses that help me out. And what we like to do is help bakers gain control of their baking businesses. And that's really just trying to get you in a position where you feel like you understand what's happening, you feel like you have a plan, um, and you're not, you know, ignoring certain parts of the business because you don't exactly know what to do. You have everything in check. That's what we like to do. And also bringing up the topic of joy in business and how finding that kind of joy and keeping it around is really important for a long-term business situation. And then lastly, we always like to touch on a sustainable income because if you're working, usually it's so that you can make some money for something. And if you're not seeing a sustainable income from baking, it could just be some things that need to be shifted in what you're doing to help out with that. And we like to help with that too. Uh, I've been doing this for almost 20 years, 17, 18 years now, both commercially and working from home. Uh, so I have a lot of information to share and that's why I'm here with you now. You can go ahead and throw up your hashtag replay if you're ever on one of my replays so I know you're here and you've seen the, the content. And uh, what we're going to be covering this month in July is essentially a path from hobby to selling. So I'm going to cover something every week on, in that topic. And I want to distill down some of those most common questions that I do get from people who are on the fence about their business or if they're new to business and they're looking for some reassurance as far as how they're working through it. Um, that this content would be good for those types of people as well. Today's topic is all about the idea of baking either from a home or a cottage business versus a commercial business, which could be a storefront, a ghost kitchen, a food truck. There's lots of different variations to that. So I'm just going to distill it down and, and be referring to this as cottage versus commercial through the content so that um, you don't get confused. Commercial can be a lot of different things. Uh, definitely you can ask your questions on the specifics of what you're doing in this video if you'd like to comment here or I do offer 20 minute free sessions one per person if you want to just get together and talk about what you're doing you can go to the website buildabetterbakerynow.com to sign up for that you'll just click on the private coaching tab it's a yellow tab in the bottom corner click on that and then you'll see uh, there's a couple different options for the 20 minute session depending on how you want to do it uh, so you can click that and pick a time so that we can talk at a time and day that works for you. If you're here live for anything, always throw up your hashtag live as well so I can say hello. If you'd like to stay in the know about when these videos are happening, you can check the events here in the group. I like to post at the beginning of the month what we're going to be talking about throughout the month. You can also send Melissa Fryer, that's me, a friend request on the Facebook platform to get invites as I make those events. That's the only way I can send them out now because our group is too large. Um, you can hang out on the email list. That's a good place to be where you're going to get direct replays at a later link or at a later date um, and also other resources and invitations to what we're doing. Lastly, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is another free resource. And it's a great place to get replays on demand, um, which it also might actually turn into our main hub soon as well. Um, just because of what's going on with Facebook right now. So definitely get in there and subscribe so we can still stay in contact in case this group uh, either dies down or doesn't last that much longer. <laughs> I just don't want you to miss out if you like the content. So definitely get over there. Right now I'm going live every Thursday at 9 a.m. Mountain Time right here in the Bakery Business School group on Facebook for now. But again, that might switch to YouTube. So one of, one of the two, I'll be in there usually weekly. And I just wanna make sure you're getting some fresh content to support your journey through the week. Okay, let's hop right in with the first question that I get a lot. Well, actually, these are more questions that I usually ask people when they tell me that they're considering one or the other. Uh, because really asking questions just to yourself or having a mentor or someone who's done it before ask you some questions about it is going to help you kind of think through what your best option is going to be. So number one is how much time do you have to devote to baking? The reason we start here is that... 
a lot of times when we when we romanticize the idea of having a bakery business, you know, a storefront, that kind of thing, we sort of kind of don't count up how much time we actually have before we start really putting passion into that idea. And it can be such a deciding factor when it comes to the balance that I hear a lot of bakers are looking for uh, when it comes to the, you know, your health and your family's health and things like that. So if you're already working another job or have a lot of family duties that keep you busy all day long, really, I think the only feasible option would be working from home. And this is due to the fact that it takes a long time just to get up and running with a commercial space that doesn't usually happen overnight. If you find a really special opportunity where you're maybe like buying an old bakery or you're just kind of transitioning into owning a bakery that's still running, you might be able to get in and get started right away, but there's still going to be a lot of time and effort to make it your own. Um, and then let alone baking daily, you know, being in there and doing all of that and dealing with all the upkeep of the shop plus your home, it's it's a whole thing. So uh, this is kind of a ballpark number. I know this is, can, be, can be different for everyone, but if you have less than 30 hours a week to devote to being outside of the home working on the bakery and being at the bakery, and you have no other help for the business, so no one can share that time with you, I would not usually suggest attempting anything but cottage baking at this time. Uh, just because if you don't have the time, you don't have the time, you know? Um, and there can be other restrictions as far as being there really late, being there really early, things like that to keep in mind. Let me just double check. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Hey, Sarah. How are you? Hope you're doing well. If you have any questions about cottage commercial stuff, let me know in here, okay? Because that's why... I like to take the questions when y'all are live with me. All right, number two, the question is, what do your financial plans look like? If you're the type of baker that needs to make more money right now, I see that a lot, you know, I'm baking to make extra money this week, things like that. And on top of that, you really don't have a lot of money to invest or ways to get money to invest in this. Cottage baking is likely the only real choice at the moment when we're talking about financials. The financials of commercial baking can be quite costly. It's pretty difficult to do it on a shoestring budget uh, just because when you're entering into that arena, it's just everyone's looking for their cut. So especially when you're trying to do it on your own without any type of grants or any money that's being sent to you that you don't have to pay back, <laughs> that kind of stuff, it can be difficult because then you're trying to get into um, loan situations and things that you're going to have a payment plan. So there can just be a lot of financial stress with this. If you are in this for the long game, if you know you're going to be doing this for a while, you're not going to be moving anytime soon, things like that, and you have some time to devote to planning it well, so just not running in, you know, you're actually going to sit down and plan it for a couple weeks or even months to make sure everything is exactly how you want it to be before you move into it, uh, and then also building out your own space. So, you know, it's unless, like I mentioned, you can't, I've seen people move into working bakeries, buy them as is, and then try to revamp them into what you want, that's still gonna take some time. So even if you're still selling things from day one, you're likely gonna wanna change the menu or the open hours or the seating arrangements or the back, you know, the back end, something like that. So there's still time to be uh, building out your own space. The positive to that right? So if you're interested in the long game, commercial will give you many more opportunities for expansion and growth in the long run. So if that's really your big plan to, you know, hire 10 people and add on catering and like, you know, really expand into other arenas, it, you could start at home, but it's going to get tight really fast. So the commercial space would be best. Keep in mind that it is very common for your first year in business to not be super profitable not because you're not doing it right, but because you probably have a lot of investments and tools that you've bought in that first year that you're working to pay off. Uh, and that can, you know, it can feel bad when you're not left with a ton of income, but really just pay attention to the numbers and try to keep in mind where the money is going, um, making sure there's good cash, cash flow, things like that. You will make more quickly as a cottage baker, specifically because of the lack of all the bills and the double rent and the things that you're going to be paying you know, on your home, in your shop. So if you don't have that whole other entity space to deal with financially, you'll probably be, be left with more money in your pocket at the beginning. But again, maybe difficulty getting in front of people, difficulty finding places to sell, things like that. So very much push and pull on um, what's going to be the best for you. 
But, uh, oh, and then lastly, I wanted to mention that, of course, there might be a cap on earnings. So you want to check your cottage laws for where you live if you're in the U.S. Sometimes they say you can't make over a certain amount. Um, I've never seen anybody try to claim more than that and get in trouble. So I don't really, <laughs> I don't know the legalities of that one and actually seeing people try to like enforce that. Um, but sometimes they say there is a cap on earnings. And then of course, cottage laws can be very, very restrictive in what you want to sell and how you want to sell it and where you want to sell it. So just keeping in mind that you've looked at all of that, just to double check, you know, what's going to work best for you. Sarah says, with getting a commercial space, everyone keeps telling me to lease a space. I'm nervous about someone telling me what I can and can't do in my kitchen and bakery. There are other fears as well. My wisdom is, would you recommend leasing or buying a property? We can think of things to do with the property we buy if the bakery doesn't work out, but I'm trying to get a better picture of which way I would go once I'm ready to open commercially. Okay, so it's a good question. I've seen people do both. Um, if you have the funds, I mean, really, you're just kind of buying an investment property at that point. We've purchased a home before, so I know this wouldn't be a home, but I can kind of understand where you're coming from. If you own it, you have a lot more uh, say in how it's run, what's going on with it. Um, what things you can change, what things you can add, all of that. So if you have the funds for it and it's in a, it's in an area that's uh, growing, um, you know, you could use it for another option. You could sell it. If there's a lot of opportunity around the space, I mean, and if I had the money, I would also buy probably just because, like you said, the control factor. Uh, with leasing, I've seen some people end up with some pretty terrible leases and agreements and leases. So I mean, that's for everyone, even, you know, renters, just home renters. That's all kind of part of it. So, yeah, I think there's risk. There's risk in both ways. So I think maybe just figuring out which one is best for you. Um, as far as if you do end up leasing, I would just really, I'm sure you would, but really read the lease, make sure you understand everything in it. And then the last thing I want you to check is uh, I'm, ass I'm assuming that the space is commercially zoned already. If it is commercially zoned, sometimes there are different like laws and regulations for things that are happening, especially like what the front of it looks like, um, you know, what's going on with, can you hang signs? Can you not hang signs? Can you have seating out front? Can you not have seating out front? What's the deal with the parking? Um, things that happen, especially like in downtown areas of towns and cities can be, it'll be kind of elusive until you actually sign the lease and then this group of people show up and say, hey, you have, it's kind of like an HOA kind of thing. So I would definitely look into that too and see if there's a difference between leasing and buying. Um, like if you can get out of some of that or whatever. So definitely um, look at that. And then I'm assuming, let's see. Actually, I, I don't know for sure from your comment is, let me know, is the specific location you're talking about, is it for lease and sale? Like, can you do either one? Or are you talking about two different complete properties? One of them is to lease and one of them is to sale or, or for sale. Or is this just like you haven't actually found places? Um, you're just trying to figure out which would be best. Let me know. Okay. Let's go back to this while she answers. Okay. And then the next point, number three, the question I get that I usually like to ask, I guess, is what are your current business plans? And similar to what we've been talking about here, the cottage laws can be kind of restrictive. So let's say you wanna sell things like cheesecake and you wanna have an ice cream stand and all this other essentially perishable items that you're wanting to sell. Usually things that, can, that need refrigeration. A commercial setting is likely gonna be really the only option for a le legit business to run. Because many cottage laws, I'm going to say probably every single one of them. I'm not totally sure on that because I haven't looked at every state's laws in the U.S. Uh, but a lot of them tell you that you can't really sell anything that's highly perishable like that from home. So if that's kind of what you do, if you sell cheesecakes, opening a commercial space is likely one of your only options if you're interested in running a legit business. Uh, you may also have plans to sell maybe retail or wholesale or something like that that's going to take more... Um, of that commercial space up because a lot of the cottage laws, I don't, I think this is maybe actually a political thing and I'm not gonna get into it right now, but I don't really understand a lot of cottage laws. I'm gonna be honest with you. I understand what they're saying, but I don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. And sometimes I think it's a political push. 
um, from the communities. So long story short, because of that, um, you know, there's going to be things that you can't do, like selling retail, et cetera, from home. Um, so if those are your plans, then you might want to consider their commercial stuff. If you want to expand, like I mentioned, or if you want to hire employees and you just want to, you know, have people working for you, if you want to ramp up sales quickly, if you want to have events and do all that kind of stuff with your space, commercial is going to allow you to do this more quickly and seamlessly. Sure, I've seen people run bakeries from their home and then hire employees and have them come in, but then that person's in your home. So, you know, is that what you want? That kind of thing. So thinking about what are my current business plans and what are my plans maybe two to three years from now, which space would work best for me at that point? Okay, let me see what she said. Okay. She, Sarah says, there are plenty of spaces to lease only. I'm nervous about taking the leap with leasing. Most properties for sale are 250000 and up before you think about renovations. Yeah. Um, I, it's not, if you're nervous about leasing, you know, it sounds like the purchasing, if you can do it financially, it sounds like you'd be more comfortable with that. I mean, that's what I'm reading from what you're writing. Um, and then, like I said, if, you know, you can do what you want with it, you can have other opportunities. The other thing with the lease is it's possible they might pigeonhole you into doing certain things. So I have, I don't know if this is going to be relatable to your situation, but I've worked with plenty of commercial bakeries and um, very closely, in fact, with the owners when it comes to reading the leases for new spaces. I've worked in a bakery where we moved locations. So we looked at all of that and we actually, that's why I'm bringing all this up as far as like the HOA stuff and the leasing issues. Um, because we moved into a space that was more of like a boutique and he wanted to turn it into a bakery. So they had to come up with this, you know, percentage thing where he paid a percentage for the ventilation and they paid a percentage of the ventilation and all this stuff added in to make it a commercial kitchen. But in the, at the end of the day, he doesn't own any of that. So he was leasing the space and he paid to put the ventilation in a part of it. But when he left, it became another bakery. He closed down because he, he retired. It became another bakery, but he didn't own it, you know? So I agree with you that in doing all the renovations on it, you know, if you owned it, then you would be able to sell it and maybe make some profit or make your money back on the renovations um, later on. So, yeah. And like I said, I have, um, I don't know if I've mentioned it yet or not, but I do have those 20 minute calls, one for every person. And I don't know that we've spoken before, so if you haven't used your call yet, you can go on the website, the buildabetterbakerynow.com. In the corner, there's the little private coaching tab. Click on that and you can pick one of those sessions and we can definitely talk about this together over like Zoom or phone or something if you wanna chat about it more. But feel free to um, continue to comment about this if you want. Okay, let's move on to number four. What are your options locally? So this is kind of what Sarah's talking about. She's got options for both. She's got leasing, purchasing, there's some, there's commercial opportunity. You may be living in an area where there really aren't a lot of commercial spaces. A lot of rural places don't have this, um, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. It just might mean there's not enough to really see them right away. So I do want you to look into the opportunities before you commit to anything. So before you decide, oh gosh, I have to bake at home. That's all I can do. I want you to kind of do some digging and look into it so that you can run some numbers and figure out what makes the best sense. If you're interested in a storefront, you likely will be looking at commercially zoned spaces that normally have about one to three year leases. So sometimes it's a year, but sometimes they try to rope you into three. So um, the nice thing about a long lease is read it carefully, but usually they can't raise the, they can't raise the rent on you. Uh, within that unless it's worked into like a rent raising plan inside of the lease. So double check that. If it's a year to year lease, that's pretty common. Uh, there may need to be some work done to get up and running renovations like Sarah was talking about or just additions of things that you'll need to run the business. You might also consider something like a ghost kitchen or a rented commercial kitchen scenario, which is a little more difficult because what you're doing is you're baking in one location and then selling in another location. So you're using the commercial certification from the kitchen you are baking in, and then usually you have that certification, so you can do retail, you can do wholesale, you can you know, do markets or whatever it is that you wanna do. So that one, I wanna warn you, 
renting space like that can get very costly. So I do want you to run the numbers or get with me on a call so we can run the numbers together because I don't want you to start renting a place and then not have a plan to actually pay for it, if that makes sense, because it can get expensive very quickly. Or you may want to look into a food truck situation where you either pay for a commercial kitchen to use their license, uh, which happens here, or you can bake in a specific area or a specific way to meet the food truck regulations that you have in your area. Food trucks are kind of a gray area, I've noticed. Um, so you'll definitely have to look into how things run where you are. Where can you park if you have your food truck? Can, what events can you go to? That kind of thing. Just create a little plan for it. Or lastly, you may, may be able to work with other organizations to use their commercially licensed kitchens. I see a lot of people doing this, especially who are just getting started. And sometimes they do this in return for product. They do like a bartering situation. They trade services, <clears throat> whatever it is. And these examples of other organizations are maybe like a church or another bakery and you're baking in their off hours or a cafe that needs baked products or a daycare center, etc. So you can kind of create relationships with people who have commercially licensed kitchens. So you can use their space and then kind of trade with them later on. You may have the opportunity within your state and neighborhood to construct a separate building on your own property that could be commercially licensed, but the laws vary. So, I re so you really need to look into this one and dig into it and are gonna be different for each location. So, you know, maybe your neighborhood wouldn't be okay with this. Maybe no one cares. You know, what does the building have to look like? How big does it have to be? How much is this gonna cost? It's a lot of questions. Uh, and a lot of the cottage laws require that it is an actual separated room by separated by a door a closing door or a completely separate building on the property. Um, so that's a good one to think about, but can be, again, quite expensive. If you have no options or no affordable options <laughs> in your area for commercial baking, I think cottage baking might be your only option at this time. Okay. All right, not seeing another comment. I'm going to keep going. And then the fifth one we're going to talk about, that I, the question I usually like to ask is, what do you want your life to look like? One thing I can tell you after 17 years of working in a bunch of commercial bakeries and also running my home bakery and moving it across the U.S. with the military moves is that one option is way more flexible than the other one. <laughs> if you have a commercial bakery, you are basically going to live there. And I don't want to scare you out of it, but that is what I have seen over the few years, well, almost two decades, I guess, that I've been doing this. Commercial baking is just, it, it's a lifestyle. It really becomes your life. So unless you plan to hire out most or all positions and simply manage it, you know, maybe come in a couple hours a day, do the books, that kind of thing. If you're baking or doing anything within the business hands-on, you will be there for many hours a week. There's really no way to get out of that. Um, especially at the beginning, you're gonna be doing all the ordering, you're gonna be doing all the inventory, you're gonna probably be opening and closing for a while, you're gonna need to do all the hiring, you're gonna need to make all the schedules, the payroll. There's just so much to do. So if you're not, you know, and that's for someone who's maybe has hired out the baking. Um, so, you know, think about all the different hats you're gonna have to wear. Are you gonna hire them out or not? Um, and a lot of times showing up for many hours a week, but also really early, sometimes 4 or 5 a.m. If you're doing donuts or other items, maybe even earlier than that. Um, so just knowing that that's, that's part of it. It might not work for someone with maybe young kids or a bunch of kids or a parent that they're taking care of or another job. Or someone who likes to travel or take off whenever and just kind of skedaddle and go somewhere. Having a commercial bakery that you're in charge of most of the time like that it's going to be difficult to live that kind of lifestyle. But if you're the type of person who really has a lot of passion and love and attention to pour into a project, this could be perfect for you because it really can envelop your whole life and it can be very exciting and very fulfilling. I think that baking really is a great profession for many reasons, but you know, the reality of everything is yes, it's going to take a lot of time. And I think it is a really strong addition to any community. So we want to keep in mind that when you open a commercial bakery, I think you're going to find a lot of love from that. And that is also pretty fulfilling as a business owner. Um, but in the end of the day, we need to take care of our health. So wherever you're at in your life, you know, decide 
if if the weight is going to land on having a lot of time for this, then I think commercial is, and you have the ability to do so, I think commercial would be a good option. I wanted to mention that, yes, I've worked in many commercial bakeries due to our move, so I didn't get fired or anything. We just moved a lot. So I was kind of hopping from each one, and I would stay for a couple years, which gave me a lot of insight on different commercial businesses, how they run, everything from a super tiny little rural cake shop to a million-dollar business in the St. Louis area. Seeing the different, the back end, the managing, the owners, the strategy, all the pricing, like everything, being able to see all of that. And I even worked at a grocery store too. So I've seen that end of it as well. The, that high end, you know, um, high push retail kind of thing. And, but what I wanted to mention about these commercial locations is that over half of them have closed. So the ones that I've worked in over the last 15, 16, 17 years, half of them are closed now. And it was not because they were not profitable, and it was not because they were not loved by the community. These were all very popular places, but simply because the owners were tired and they'd had enough of the grind because they were the type of person that wanted to be there and they wanted to be a part of the business. And it was just too much for them. They, I will say each one of these owners, you know, had things they could have worked on, I guess I would say now, <laughs> years later. Um, so maybe they could have stayed longer if they had done certain things, but I just want to put it out there that yes, like commercial is, can be a grind. If you take time to plan and prep, as well as know what you're getting into before you jump head first into commercial ownership, it can be highly rewarding. It might be literally the best thing that you have ever done with your life. If you play your cards right, you can hire and train early so you can get some of your life back sooner <laughs> rather than later. And I've noticed that bakers that go through the cottage to commercial course that we have, when they're planning or considering a commercial bakery, they leave with this type of confidence that they can create a plan that works best for their future because they've gotten some insight on what is this going to look like. And then they can use the guidance from our team to create choices, better choices as they move forward. Uh, it just helps to have people around you to brainstorm with and to ask questions and to talk about plans. I just think it's a much better situation for anyone that's moving into commercial. If you need flexibility in your life and you're willing to trade the opportunity for higher sales and other specific offer opportunities for selling that you won't have with Cottage, Cottage is going to be a better fit if you need the flexibility. You can take off when you want, you can bake what you want, and you can create a job that fits very neatly into your life, but you likely won't be able to grow very fast and as large as you would with commercial. So that's kind of, I think, maybe the most um, concise difference between the two. Now, which do you think is best if you viewed this video? Let me know. Cottage or commercial? Which one do you think is best for your lifestyle? Which one are you most excited about? Let me know in the comments. We can check those later too. Let's see if we have any other comments before we wrap up. <laughs> Ange says, I'm a commercial bakery and I live here. Yes. So you know what, Ange? Um, now that you're here, if you're still here, let us know if you could, can you give me a snapshot of maybe how many, how many hours would you say you put in a week or a month? Just out there, let us know. All right, so to do a quick recap, <clears throat> the choice to bake cottage versus commercial normally comes down to these topics. Time availability, business and product plans, financial plans, local options, and lifestyle choice. Those are just the five biggest ones. If you'd like to chat about your specific situation, go to the website and click on the private coaching in the bottom corner so that we can discuss at a time that works for you so I can really hear your story and give you better advice than just this general information. Um, that's buildabetterbakerynow.com. And if you could use our mentor team to assist you with the cottage to commercial transition, a lot of people get really nervous about this or just feel like they need a hand to hold, that's why we're here. You can join our happy bakers who've already enrolled and went through the Cottage to Commercial course. Uh, some of the topics we cover in there are funding, legality, contracts, location selection, pricing, menus, payment systems, open hours, hiring, time management, supplies, inventory, space planning and organization, marketing strategy, customer attraction, and more. So we cover a lot of what, you, what you'll likely encounter within the first one to three years of what you're going to do. We'd like to give that all to you first so that you can move into it really knowing what to, what to expect. And it comes with other guidance as well. So as you're building, you can get back with us and ask us questions. 
you can head over to the website, you can click on resources, then on online courses, and you can sign up there. There's a money back guarantee, so love it or get your money back. It's a really simple, we wanna make sure you are a happy situation. So it's buildabetterbakerynow.com. You can find all of that information there. You can also DM me here. You can send me an email to melissa at buildabetterbakery.com. We can talk about it there. And I hope this has all been helpful for you today. We'll be back next Thursday this month for our final topic for July, which is financials of starting your baking business. So I just want to talk a little bit about what to expect there and what to look for. Hope you all have the best day. I'll see you next week. And I hope to just to support you directly in your mentorship soon. Ange says that she's here from 4 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. six days a week. So that just gives you a, you know, straight up answer from someone who's actually doing it right now. It's a lot of time. Um, again, if you have passion and energy and you're excited and you're just so, you just want to get in there and work, work, work. I've done that for lots of my life, so I totally get it. Then it would be a great opportunity, definitely. All right, everybody. I'm going to head out. Let me know if you need anything else. Talk to you later. Bye.